Gracious Providence, we ask that you bless this governing body with an abundance of wisdom and understanding so that every deliberation will result in actions which will promote the common good and the general welfare for all the people of Pequannock Township. Amen. Amen. Okay, if the clerk can please do roll call. Mr. Hurd? Here. Mr. Cole? Here. Mr. Phelan? Here. Ms. Winterfield? Here. Mayor Florence Lynch? Here. All right, there are no presentations scheduled for this evening, so we're going to move right on to reports from volunteers. If there's any um, member of the audience that has a uh, report to contribute, please come up, state your name and address, and your committee or board for the uh, record. Good evening. I know you guys missed me, right? We did. Okay. <laughs> Rocco Salucha, Fair Housing. Um, we had the first meeting with the people that they were assigned to us uh, from Green, I forgot the, the last name. Right. And uh, the only remark that I heard was that the papers or the files were given to him only two days prior to the meeting. And the guy got caught in shorthanded a stick a little bit like this, yes, so he was a little bit taken. But it seems like he knows what he's doing, okay? I'm also here tonight to express that, to, to make sure that he doesn't fly by himself. I expressed already two or three times that there's a meeting that he has to coordinate with. Uh, I got an indication, said, well, I have a lot of times that I don't respond to meetings uh, or committees. I said, well, this one you do, <laughs> unless otherwise uh, done by the council. So. If anybody has an input over there, it would be kind of nice to reach over and say, listen, we got to fly with the wings over here. We don't fly by the our tents. And as far as that's going over there, we're trying to catch up a little bit. We've been uh, hampered by a couple situations where we had uh, a, uh, a secretary that lasted about seven, eight months. Then now we get thrown into this situation. I'm, I'm very happy that the guy knows what's going on. So with that said, mm -hmm. somebody referred to the company that we're dealing with, at least from my point of view, if they like to keep the, the appointment or what job, I think they should cooperate with the committee. Thank you. Thank you, Rocco. Can I just um, ask one quick thing? So the person that we hired, is he required to go to every meeting, or is it something that yeah. if he can't make a, a meeting no. that they can just correspond with His contract email? was only for two months. We he, should start it over next year. All right. But he he we, said at the meeting that he would be at every meeting. Okay. So there you go. Yes. And if he's not, let somebody know. Well, I uh, just also like to tell him that it's uh, his call to say if we don't have anything for the meeting to cancel the right. meeting. It's right. got to run by the chairman or the vice chair. We may have some other things to add to the agenda. It's not up to him. So that's the point right. I'm trying yeah, to stress right If you're not going right to have a meeting, you cancel it. Right. Thank you. Thanks. All right. Anyone else? Reports from volunteers? Yes. Come on up, please. Steve. Hi. Stephen Connolly, uh, 44 Duncan Avenue. Uh, the Pequannock Skate Park Advisory Committee. Um, just wanted to, well, first of all, this is probably one of the last times that I'll be reporting on behalf of this until we get the design finalized. Um, so it's going to be uh, sweet memories. Um, <laughs> so we had a design, a concept design meeting. We had three designs that were presented by Pillar Designs, and uh, one was a 5,000, I won't go into too much of the details, but where we are in, the, in this process, there were three um, designs. One was 5,000 square feet, two were 7,000. Uh, they ranged in price. We liked the first one and the last one as far as what it offered in flow and the ability to have skateboarders, BMXers, and scooters all able to use the park not just like skateboarding so uh, we took we changed some of the features incorporated some of the um, elements in the first design which was the smaller design we also shrunk it down a bit we got rid of about 500 square feet um, and also uh, removed some stairs to accommodate BMXers and scooters 
there's a lot of other little elements, but we should be getting uh, the final designs by the end of the month. Um, and we also have been working on in-kind donations. Uh, Tilcon said they're in writing they gave a, a uh, commitment to give us 50% off or over 50% off structural fill. And there's a couple other um, in-kind donations we'll be getting. Uh, I can't really mention yet because it's in the works, but it all has to do with materials. And these are things that will bring the final cost down. And when we get the final design, we're also going to get a bill of materials and services. So these are things we will know if we get donations on those things and we put it in an RFP for a build, then we know like we'll, where we'll sit as far as how much it's going to cost. Um, let's see. Also, being that we're towards the end of our tenure as a ad hoc advisory committee, there are a few more steps left, so we would like to request to extend until we get to that point of where, uh, you know, if, if it comes to a point where we need to uh, just uh, give you guys some advice on, on further uh, bringing this down the road. Um, we have a couple guests that uh, want to speak to you guys. Uh, Let me guess, they're over there? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We're over here. <laughs> I was going to say to the mayor, please ask them to come up here. Yes, please <laughs> come up. They are. Yep. Everybody in the council knows me. I'm Lieutenant Mike Fairweather. I'm with the Dequan Police Department. I am in charge of our detective bureau. This is Detective Steve Cicchetti. He's our juvenile uh, officer. Um, about two years ago, we in the Detective Bureau really started getting active uh, with doing some community policing. We really hadn't been doing a good, a uh, lot of it uh, for the town, but the last two years we've done a massive amount of events. Um, we're at every hoedown, every uh, street fair. Um, we're doing a lot of stuff at the Senior Citizens Complex. And back at the hoedown in September, we had the Skate Park Committee approach us about uh, lending their our support as the police department and as our local uh, union, the Pequannock PBA 172, uh, to Towards their project. Um, I spoke at length with Chief Spring about it. Um, he is uh, in support of it. He's been in support of it for quite a while now. I know this project's been going on for a long time. It looks like it may eventually uh, soon jump the hurdle and get into uh, shoveling to the ground. Um, I know in, when speaking with Chief Spring, uh, we've discussed about our uh, drug forfeiture fund. When we do uh, drug operations uh, and we get the money from the bad guys, we're then allowed to spend it on certain uh, tangible objects uh, that promote uh, police policing and promote uh, anti-drug. Um, so I know the Chief has uh, earmarked some money towards this project once it gets underway. Um, I also spoke with our PBA president, Tim DePite, um, and I also spoke with our entire PBA members at a meeting recently and expressed uh, what the project is, is entailing and um, everybody uh, from the PBA is uh, in support of the project. Uh, the PBA will be making a donation towards the project in the future. Um, I also have spoken uh, with Sheriff uh, Gannon. Uh, Sheriff Gannon has uh, attended a meeting with me uh, where a presentation was made regarding the skate park and he was definitely into it. Um, he actually had uh, mentioned that uh, back in Boonton, he used to skate a lot when he was uh, 50 years ago. Uh, so it's definitely something that's uh, near and dear to him also. Um, I brought up uh, Detective Chichetti. Like I said, Detective Chichetti does all of our juvenile and our youth uh, programs here. Um, and he has a real good grasp on uh, what the youth of uh, Pequannock are, are looking for. And uh, I'd like to just let him talk a couple minutes about how this project would benefit everybody. Yeah, I think what um, we're looking to do in, in, in our role is not to determine determine whether, you know, whether this is, is right for us to go forward with, but to throw our support in the fact that, you know, we have baseball fields, we have football fields, we have soccer fields, we have all these things for our kids. Um, and this is just another healthy alternative for our kids, all right, in a day and age where our kids are busy with iPads and cell phones, you know, I feel strongly that this is a nice healthy alternative for these kids to get out and get active. Um, I think it'll draw a nice crowd and I think it's going to be a nice thing for our community. It's going to, it's going to be a standout, okay, not a lot of communities have something like this for their youth. This is something that we would have and be able to offer to our community. I think it's great. Um, so, you know, when we were talking about it, that was one major thing. I think it'll allow us the opportunity to get involved a little bit. We can go and maybe talk to the kids about helmet safety. You know, we can do maybe something with our bike squad, get 
get in and kind of show them some different things like that. So I think it'll offer a nice benefit for us as the police department as well. Um, and you know, it's just, you know, when you look at a, a, a skate park like this, I just think it's a, a, a beautiful thing for, the, for these kids to have the opportunity to be involved in. Um, and so I think, you know, this is something that we would like to uh, support, um, you know, and, and hopefully see go through. We're just to come tonight and uh, let everybody know where uh, the Quantic PBA and the police department is in support. Okay, so can Thank I make you. a comment? Sure. Yes, sir. of course. Okay. Um, <laughs> of course, we respect you guys. You know that. And we, we think highly of your opinion and so forth, et cetera. One of the things that we're going to wrestle with is the cost of this, and you guys got to keep that in mind. Oh, yes, of course. We, we, we've heard numbers of 500,000, all kinds of crazy numbers, and we don't know what that number is yet. And I'm encouraged to hear that some people are going to donate money to it which will help pay for some of this but we have to get our arms around exactly what it's going to cost and you know that um, we're, we're going to it's not going to be behind the police building here it's going yeah, to be gonna you be know where it's going to be okay okay well like I said we're, we're you know we are about uh, giving anything no, I agree Back with you. Right. If I, it's I, a I, skate park, yeah. if it's a football field, and this is the this is what had come to us. Um, it looks like it's a well organized program that they that they've been working on, um, and it's something that we feel is great because it's 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 definitely a little alternative uh, to traditional uh, sports, um, and you know we're seeing more and more uh, alternative kids that are you know not interested in the, the team sports. So it gives them a good place to. I, I think uh, for years, you know, during the course of my career, during the course of your career on patrol, we move these kids from area to area to area. We have local business owners complaining that they're hanging out there. And I feel that this, personally in speaking, this would be a be a place for them to go and, you know, do what they want to do. They can skate there. They can do those things. And we don't have to kick them out of out of businesses and worry, you know, about the liability that the business owners are concerned about. So I think that's just a nice thing. But like I said, obviously we're not here to, to determine whether this is, you know, something that we can afford. Obviously that's up to you guys. But we did just want to say we are in support of it should you decide that this is right for our community. Okay. So. One last thing. Yeah, sure. Here's what I believe in. Great police force, great fire department, great first aid squad, great DPW, then a great um, parks and rec department. So you guys get the top. <laughs> so I appreciate it. Is when it comes to money, thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you. I have one, one, one thing too I'd like to say is well, thank you very much for all your support. But one thing is, um, you know, in the beginning, we haven't done something like this. It will require maybe extra patrol, extra time around there, or something. I mean, I'm sure you're committed to helping us support to make sure this is a safe place. Yes, that's, that's speaking on behalf of Chief Springs, of course we would be. That would be our number one uh, priority. Okay, thank you. Thank you very thank much. You. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Thanks for coming. All right. Uh, anyone else? Reports from volunteers? I don't think they were volunteers. I know. <laughs> <laughs> volunteers, comments from the community. Okay. All right. Next on the agenda is public comment. Um, the public comment period will be limited to a total of 30 minutes. An additional period of public comment is reserved later in the meeting. Individuals are, are asked to limit their questions uh, and comments to three minutes. If anyone addresses to um, address the council, please wait to be recognized. Come on up, Rocco, since you have your hand up. And uh, say, provide your name and address for the record, please. Uh, Rocco Solution, 153 Jacksonville Road. I have a question concerning this uh, mm -hmm. uh, park, the skate park, whatever you want to call. It's going to, I heard about 5,000 to 7,000 square feet. Is that, I heard that right? I heard a couple of options. I heard one at five, okay. one at seven, and I don't know what the other All one right. is, but we're still waiting for the numbers. As Councilman uh, Richard? Failing. Failing. Okay, I can't see with my glasses on. Uh, the cost is a factor. That's number one. Number two is I heard they're going to include now motorcycle and scooters or whatnot. They, they always <laughs> talked about making it an all-purpose. They used the word skateboard, but it was okay. always meant to be all-purpose. Uh, the no. point I want to make is this year: is it not, just not motor, for the people of the town? Are we going to anybody could come in there? You don't forget you got a liability that you have to worry about, mm -hmm. and people from outside town. They're more up to a sue very quickly than people in town. 
going on. Yeah. That's something we'll have to work through and talk and about if we Blanco, move forward. Remember too, though, that same thing holds true for everything that we do. So I whether it's over at Greenview Park, we have that wonderful playset that a lot of people outside of. I understand, but when you're dealing with skateboards and they're not fully protected, and you're still responsible for them Absolutely. when they get hurt. It's yes. not a question. They have somebody that uh, surveils this year and say, okay, you don't have pads on, therefore you can't skate. At least there you have pads on when you're over in that big, wonderful place wow. over in Greenview. All the little kids that are playing on that don't have pads. And that's the, the other point that you got to, uh, you know, you got to remember. Yeah, so. too, right? the, the other thing I like to say, did anybody do a uh, survey to see how many people more or less are going to use this year? No, okay. I don't think so. All right. the, because if there's a cost factor over there, and I'm all for it. Uh, by the way, this was tried already many, many years ago. And I thought it was a good idea then, as long as the cost is controlled, and at least people that they in charge, they supervise the kids or whatnot. If you're going to hire some people just to take care of this here, don't forget, that's an extra additional yeah. expenses that you got to worry about. Right. We don't right. have arms around the cost. Right. Right. Yeah. So. And, okay. and then we have to all talk right. about it. Like I said, I'm not trying to bat down on this year, but mm -hmm. find out. If you're only going to have it for 10 kids, are you willing to spend half a million dollars or whatever you guys are? I'm there? sure there'll be more than 10 kids. Yeah. Yeah. I'm just saying. Yeah. Okay. Thank, Thank you, Rocco. Uh, yes. Uh, Jackie. Jackie. Hey, Jackie Stavala, 7 Pateri Place. Um, I, I only went to one other meeting, and I've, tr I've tried to make a lot of phone calls and um, bring myself up to par. I spoke to uh, Jordan, the last skate meeting. Kathleen was there. Dave Holbrook was there. Um, since then, I've looked at a couple things. Okay, so there were three plans. I was here, and Pilar Design gave us the plans. Um, at the end, they were changing some of the plans because they didn't like them. I don't know whatever happened with that. But the questions I had was, I, I now have the Municipal Excess Joint Liability Insurance Fund that we hold with the town. Um, I got that from Dave's office. And I called um, the girl today who is the supervisor there, and I asked her a lot of questions. And as Rocco sa stated, um, as far as liability goes, some of these numbers were 500000 Now, if you look at this joint uh, JIF, some of the things they're saying is, um, um, Stephen? Connolly, oh, okay. Connolly, uh, Mr. Connolly said that you know it could be used for BMX and that. Um, as for our per our insurance, shared BMX and skating activities are not acceptable unless the skateboard park attractions have been designated for both activities and separate usage times have been posted. Um, we need eight to ten foot fencing around it if it's going to be. It has to be closed at night to have our insurance coverage be valid. Um, it has to be open after, if it's open after dark, it must be well lit. Now that's not something that wasn't included in the, in the cost with Pilar. Um, there have to be hours, you have to have, um, sorry, because I'm like, I went up the stairs and I, I'm so out of breath. Um, you have to have um, an area to store stuff. That was never added on because of safety. The kids can't just throw stuff down for tripping factor or whatever. Um, it says water fountain is advisable, restrooms are advisable. Um, the other thing was um, they have to wear helmets and they have to wear protective gear. Now, if this is going to be an unmonitored thing, which I was told by Kathy when I talked to her, that if it's unmonitored, we're better off because then we don't have liability. Well, that to me seems like a very broad aspect. Um, you know, we want to follow all of the things with the insurance. And just real quick, I mean, I'll do it later on. I don't want to take up everybody else's time. One of the main things that was um, quoted to us was the... Um, the park in Bar Harbor. It's the MDI, Mount Desert Island Skate Park in Bar Harbor. And it was just opened um, this Sunday, June 27th in 2007. Their design is 8,775 square feet, which was, Dave, almost about the amount of what we're doing. Their design plans were only 6,500. We allocated how many dollars for our town for the plans? Julia, it was 25,000? No, 25,000. Oh, it was 25,000? For the plans, it was 25. Okay. And we're kind of in in sync with that number. Their phase for 8,775 square feet was 149,000. Now Bar Harbor, because I did my, those of you who know me, I made a lot of phone calls, and um, the town gave them the park, but the people raised all the money. They got in-kind donations, they didn't get a dollar from town council. 
That's coming from these people's monies and these people's pockets. Nothing was given. So if you're going to vote for this, you have to do your homework. And I have a lot more stuff, but I'll put it in emails and everything else because I don't want to take up from anybody else's time. Thank yeah, you. please do. Thank you. Thank you for your uh, due diligence and your input. Um, anyone else would like to come up? Public comment? Yeah. No? Yes, Jordan. Jordan Galliano, uh, Tempec Avenue. Um, as Jackie said, that she was at the meeting, uh, the design meeting from Pillar Design. Uh, the park in Bar Harbor that Pillar Designs uh, designed, Brad Sileki designed, that is not an 8,700 square foot park. It was a 4,000 square foot park, not double the size. And Brad did not specify that there were other additional phases that went on to the park. And it has stayed at a 4,000 square foot park size. Um, the other things with the uh, comments was, was that Jackie was at the meeting and that uh, regarding uh, joint insurance fund, and we did mention this at the meeting, that bathrooms, lighting, and well, uh, water fountains are um, add-ons. They're not required. They're advised for the park. So that's money that we choose to or not put towards the park for the um, lighting. Uh, sorry, I'm losing my train of thought. Uh, um, but uh, lighting bathrooms and water fountains. Uh, we already have the bathrooms at Washington Park by the Little League stand. So we, uh, in the future, will uh, be in communication with the Little League program. Are they open 24 hours of the day, the bathrooms? Well, that's what we'd have to uh, figure out with the Little League so. to see what we'd have to uh, do in accommodations for uh, the bathrooms. Um, if we have to build a, a bathroom facility that is obviously too much money. Um, I've been to multiple skate parks where they just have a porta potty right on the side of the skate park. That's and tacky looking. But it suits its purpose. Well, yeah, it is, but it suits its purpose. So instead of building a, a $50,000 bathroom facility, it suits what, what, the purpose of the what, what, facility. We, right. So you're designing the park with two, three phases. Right now, you'll do one phase, but the design That'll is be designing yeah. all the way through? Uh, no, we're looking at uh, one phase okay. for the park. I, I, that's what I just want to clarify. Initially, they were talking two phases, right? Now. Initially, we were talking two phases, but um, for the sake of the excitement around the park, um, we feel that uh, for the folks in the community that to do it in one phase, one big phase, and it can accommodate more people. Because if you have a smaller skate park, like, say, Bar Harbor or Nyack, Nyack is a good example. Uh, it's 45 minutes away, one of the nearest concrete skate parks that's a good skate park and beautiful scenery, nice town. Um, that is a 5,500 square foot skate park. And if you have like 10 people there, the park is crowded immediately. Mm -hmm. So to have a to do the park in one phase, the whole park that you're looking at, that way it can accommodate more people to skate in different areas of the park. That way you're not having a smaller park where people are constantly colliding into each other, then it becomes more of a, a safety issue. So to have a larger park, and skaters are attentive and aware of where everybody is skating, and knowing that you take your turn, and you know when other people's runs are done, so then you can go and do your tricks as you see fit. Um, and then when it comes to the requirements for safety equipment and everything, that is something that we will be working with you, Town Council, to address in the future. Um, the helmets, of course, we have to address that with the Joint Insurance Fund so that we are protected under the Joint Insurance Fund. So let me ask a question. Mm -hmm. Do we have to put a sign up that says you must wear a helmet yes. and that's all you yeah, do? That, Every skate park does that. But that's yeah. all you do? No, so well, there's parks, probably more things. Yeah, A lot of skate parks, it depends on how the town wants to handle it. So if the town wants to put up a fence, oh, sorry, put up a sign and say, skate at your own risk, that is kind of alleviating the um, liability for it, saying that you post it and say, skate at your own risk. These are the rules that you have to comply by. And um, and then it also depends on certain towns if they want to have this, the fence or the sign and then also monitor it as well. We're not going to be able to monitor it. Kathy, let me ask you a question. Mm -hmm. what, the skate park that we visited, that that had the fence around it? Ooh, which skate you park have did you to visit? have the fence, yeah. Right. And the thing is, is if you have it monitored, then you accept more liability. Correct. Now you're monitoring it. You're, okay. you're, when you don't 
don't monitor it and it's at your own risk, then you, there's less liability. Right, that there's was, always liability, but that's why you have insurance. Right, but we, when the one we visited was get at your own risk. Yes, most of them are. They were being bought. Most of them are at your own yeah, risk. Yeah, and that was the other thing I want to address too is that a lot of skate parks they do the same thing where they have a lot of uh, time slots for certain activities. So like you'll have one day that's dedicated just to BMXers or certain times throughout the day for those activities. So well, you can have when both I went with and Kathy, they were bikes and skateboards simultaneously. Well, that also depends on how the town decides to monitor it and with but supervision. Nobody was monitoring it. They may not exactly. be in the GIF, too. They're not all yeah, in the GIF. And that depends on what yeah, towns right, are not included in the joint insurance fund. Yeah. Uh, what was the skate park that you went to? Yes, I, I don't remember the name of it. Sayerville? No. Which one was it that you visited? I don't remember. I don't remember where we went. Uh. Yeah, but a series of uh, policies. Montclair, I think, maybe? Yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah, I think that's yeah, somewhere around. A series of policies that are being implemented by council. Maplewood? Right. I don't know. It was a long time ago. It didn't make sense to... I've been to so many places. Yeah, I got to go through yeah. all the... Gyrations. Gyrations right. of the policy implications until we got to a point where we decided we were going to move forward. Right, and that point won't come until somebody tells us how much is it going to cost with all the incidentals. Yeah, because I, I really don't think just hanging a sign up, skate at your own risk, is reducing our liability. No. Uh, but well, yeah, that's but just but what you hire somebody to monitor that. Well, it will take rules, as Dave says. It will take rules, yeah. yeah. yeah you have to just put the council on that. Put that. Out there and yes, that doesn't come from the committee. Right. That but if it's monitored, yeah. there's more liability. Well, probably. Yes. Yeah. 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 The committee for input on it. Right. There, there are very specific policies that have to be put in place to qualify for the insurance. Right. Every skate park puts signage, right. everything like that. Does so anyone know how far away we are from getting our final number? Uh, I think we are. By Christmas, we should. Yeah, hopefully by Christmas. That way, we'll, like Steve said, we've worked around the size, and I didn't know that until Steve came up saying that uh, we've re reduced the size by 500 mm -hmm. square feet. Um, so uh, we are looking at a 6,500 square foot park around that ballpark. Um, so that will reduce costs a little bit. And like Steve said, that we are working for getting in kind donations uh, for structural fill, um, DGA certified uh, structural fill, which will help us uh, offset. That cost for the park as long as well with um, we are working on a concrete um, in kind donation and other uh, and I believe you have a fundraiser coming up don't you yes we have our uh, boards and brews fundraiser coming up in engine number two in Pequonic. Uh that's this Saturday um, we have it's practically sold out uh, the uh, ticket sales ending tonight. Um, we have a lot of uh, support from local businesses, as, long as, as well as uh, support from uh, skateboard companies that are giving door prizes away. Um, so everybody's going to eventually go home with something at this. So, so this might not cost us any money, right? Yeah, right. You're gonna get you never know. I mean, that's that's the hope. I mean, I mean, it is great yeah. to have support from council, but we also do want our do our deal. Uh, sorry, we want to do our due diligence and say that we just don't want it to be handed to us, but we want to show that we are working for it and we have been working for it but the fact of the matter is that we've worked for over two years to get to this point to mm -hmm. get the design it's practically in our hands and for us to get the design and show it to people that have been saying I want to I want to support I want to donate but I need to see a design once we hand those people the design and they'll see it in concrete not literally but in <laughs> paper <laughs> then they can see and say okay here's ten thousand dollars or twenty thousand dollars and and that's the hope. We may right. make a profit on this. Yeah, exactly. Right. Well, that's the that's the other thing too. That we want to. <laughs> we are going to be doing lessons, and we're going to be doing contests. No, I'm <laughs> no, no, but it's true. Yeah. I mean, filling out permits for for events and birthdays or lessons and right. through Parks and Rec, that's revenue for the town. Mm -hmm. And sure, it is a costly investment in the in the initial use of it. But I mean, it is like the police officer said. It's something great for the kids in the community that mm -hmm. are that want to get interested in these sports and for me doing skate lessons three rounds of skate lessons we had what was it eight the first time uh, 11 the, or 14 the second time and then 17 kids the third time and that's just a, a few of the kids in town that's without right. a skate park and that's without a skate park mayor we're going to burn through 30 minutes sorry yeah i, yeah. Can, I can sit down jordan thank you so no much problem. i just want to uh, keep up that fundraising we are yeah. thank you <laughs> yes donna I'll get you next. Uh, Donna Satani, 117 Greenwood Ave. Um, I really have to address the flooding issue again with the skate park. I've told Jordan and everybody before, I, I have no problem with the skate park except where you plan to put it. Um, 
you know, when there was discussion in front of the council about building the castle, um, we were required, or they were required, to put it on pillars to allow the free flow of the water, the natural flow of the water. Uh, which is why you have all their parking underneath and everything is open and clear. Stop and shop after the last flood had to put floodgates underneath to allow the flood water to seek its own level and go where it naturally goes. Putting a structure of this size in a floodplain, it just makes no sense to me. You know, the water is going to find its way there. It's not going to just go around it. It's going to backlash from it. And it's going to go on to Jefferson. It's going to go on to Greenwood Ave. And all the other houses in that area. Um, another thing I wanted to bring up was, um, you know, FEMA is buying out all these houses along the river. And why are they doing that? It's not only because they're tired of dumping money into them, but it's also to clear a path for the natural flow of the water. Um, I know some trees were planted along Pequannock Ave to help absorb some of the rainwater, flood water that accumulates on the ground there. Um, this building in a floodplain just takes away more and more vegetation. I know that they talked about putting in a water garden. The last flood took down a 40-foot tree in my backyard. A water gar garden is not going to survive the flood water. And I don't think it's going to help very much either. I am extremely concerned about this solid structure in the area of a floodplain. And I think that you really, you really need to look at that, especially if you're going to fight FEMA on one hand, you know, with the new designations, I don't know how you can allow this in a floodplain. All right, that's just my opinion. Well, we appreciate your thoughts, Donna. Does anybody have comments for Donna or questions? I have a question. Go ahead. So I, I, I understand. <laughs> Can't run away. Sorry. So I 100% I understand your concerns. I'm the past chair of the flood committee. I lived in the flood zone. My family went through four floods, and our whole, everything we owned was out on the street yeah. more than once. Yeah. I'll never, ever approve anything that's going to be detrimental to the flood area. So if this has anything to do negatively on flooding, I'll never approve it. With that said, I have looked into it. And at this point, with all the information I have, I feel confident that it's not going to do anything negative for flooding. What I do think we really need to do is, like you said, we do have to go against the flood maps because that's something that's very, very big. Yeah. And number two, I think the biggest way that we can help people in town is get them elevated. That's the biggest thing. We can't do anything to stop the flooding, per se. No, you can't. It's still going to rain. It's, I mean, that's just nature. We do mitigate, and especially with the castle. And part of the castle is it's a huge structure. Yeah. So if that was sitting on the ground, that would absolutely modify how water comes around and gets pushed around. So that's really why it's elevated. Right. Uh, this is a structure that's going to be pretty much level with the earth. It's not going to be a four foot high wall that's going to stop and that's going to change flooding so i just want you to know that absolutely if i think that has anything to do negative on the flooding side i will not be voting for it i think there's elevated ramps yeah that's what they're in but there's drainage too right yeah and drainage yeah. But, but just my problem with i don't but, all right I let's move along because we're going to run out of time there was a girl in the back here you want to come up yeah. Hi, I'm Sandy LaCourt from Four Pateri Place, and um, I also have some concerns about the flooding issue as far as that when there is a concrete structure, water absolutely does, does go around it, and that is going to be a problem. My other concern is for this to be paid for by our town and that there's not there has not been significant sweat equity in it, and starting a fundraiser now, you know, may be great, but five, if it's $500,000 plus plus all these other expenses, um, I, I just think that's, I, I really don't want that to show up in, at this point in our taxes, unless of course you're thinking about letting us put in a hockey rink also, because I mean, you know, <laughs> that's our next, that's our next thing. Um, the other question is, is this on Green Acres property? 
Is this in the Green Acres plan? The, the property? I don't know. The Part of the Green Acres? Because if it is, definitely you have to allow um, people from other areas to use it on a, you know, on a scheduled or, or a proportionate you basis. Would have, That's I'd have to do that anyway. You would have to do that? Yep, we, we've taken Green Acres money in one record. Right, and that, okay, so you're going to have to do that. So you already knew that was going to happen? Right. So it's it, already in the planning. So it's not bothersome that there are going to be people coming here saying they'll drive 45 minutes to go to a, another rank that they'll be driving. The bigger and more beautiful list is here that they'll be driving to here. Mm -hmm. And then the police officers, I noticed, were giving their support, which is awesome. But if they're going to be patrolling, I'm sure that's not going to be on, or, or is it on their like free time, or are they volunteering, or when they're giving their support to patrol, that will also be on paid time? Is is that yeah. what's going to be happening? Because then that's going to sure create more. Uh, I mean, it will be a greater need if there's a, a skate park and there's more than 10 people who are saying if you can only have 10 people safely in a certain area um, and, you know, and there's going to be people from other towns coming in. It just seems like there's going to be need for more patrolling, which there's is up. more cost. Well, they, no. well, is that not? Is that? Am I saying that? Is that? No, I understand. Correct. Uh, is the logic correct? Well, Washington Park already exists, so it's already getting paroled. Whether or not there's people there, so I don't see an increase in paroling because another structure is going to be there. Really? Yeah. So, so they can like watch the baseball fields and and be over there and make sure everything's going on at they the same time. The either. Baseball fields on this and way. Just they like drive a quickie. The back end of the baseball. Field. Okay. I'm there. I'm a mm -hmm. little league coach. Uh, I've been been there many years myself. Uh huh. Well, um, I'm just a little concerned about some of these issues that have been brought up myself, and I do want to take my name off the um, free that it's a free skate park. I think there's. I, I want my name off the thing that I signed. I don't know how to get my name off of that petition. I don't want it to be free. I think that it, that people should have to pay for it. I think when people pay for things, they have um, a, more investment in taking care of it and more investment in what goes on. So um, those are just my comments. Quick question. Thank you. Yes. Mm -hmm. So uh, just to clarify that. Sure. More like a membership thing? Yes. Okay. For some, right. Some, Very interesting. Well, if you, first of all, you won't have enough members to support it. No, but I mean, it's an interesting topic. No, but we've had no. those discussions, you know, about do you charge for outside residents? Do you? Uh, yeah. Charge for, you know. Because because if you charge, think about if you you buy a gym membership. Right. Okay. If they, if they told you you can go to the gym all the time for free, people aren't going to go. But you pay for it, or you pay for a class somewhere, and you know you paid ahead of time, or you pay for a dinner ahead of time. You're more likely to go to that and not just blow it off if you knew you paid for it. That's just the fact mm -hmm. of programming, like sure. running programs. That's just, I've been doing that long enough to know that that, show me the money is what we <laughs> And Sandy, we appreciate yes. your input. Okay. We, I know my time is probably up. Price, we'll be, mm -hmm. you know, talking about all these okay. concerns and issues. Just so. bringing up whatever points. Okay. And if, you, and if you have a concern about getting your name off of a petition, I think the clerk has the petition. Okay. Thank mistaken. you. Thank you. All right. Thanks. Bye. I, I just have a question. Hot, question. For Bob, yeah. how, how is that going to work with Green Acres if we do charge a fee? Well, just like our, just like we charge a fee at PV Park, you know, it's a recreation facility, but it's a, the fee is 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 op, you know is open to all. It's a special use park, so so we can do that. If we took we Green can. Acres money towards the actual improvements, that would be a different story. But within okay. the then park, you can. we can do that. Okay. okay. Yeah. All right. Anyone else? One more. Yes. Hello, uh, Janice Galliano, 10 Peck Ave. Um, a few weeks ago, I can't recall what meeting, I did bring up a question about the paved parking spots behind the ball fields. I counted 70 spots roughly all together. Um, I did some math. I didn't go out and measure every parking spot, um, but I assumed a parking spot is about 8 to 10 feet wide, and I'm assuming, I don't know, maybe 10 feet long. So my guesstimate is maybe 30 feet wide so I did some math um, let's assume that the spots are 8 feet wide times 35 spots wide long that would be 8,400 square feet of pavement in the flood zone 
if the spots are 10 feet wide times 35 long, 35 spots long, double, two on each side to make 70 spots, that would be over 10,500 square feet can of I, pavement. Can I ask a question? I yes. think you're, you're stating it wrong. I think you have to go by square footage times the amount of spots. You're saying 10 foot long times 35. You have to do square footage. Well, if it's... Maybe I didn't do it right. <laughs> but I did 10 <laughs> feet. <laughs> right, but I'm a, if my math is right, so I think, I'm not the math, spot. but I'm figuring it's, if it was like 8,500 8, square yeah. feet of pavement right. in that yeah. area. So you know what I mean. Yes. I'm, I was never good at math. But anyway, <laughs> <laughs> I just wanted to bring that up because I did put in a request for the Oprah form to be submitted to me. Yeah. Did you get it? I, I haven't gotten it, but you know, I'm patiently waiting. So I'm waiting to see what the allotment, what monies were allocated to all the fields through the years, and when et cetera, did you put et that in? Yeah, that's uh, December 5th. Oh, okay. Yeah. It's due pretty soon. Yeah. So, I mean, I know. I, but I know they've been working on it. Um, and as far as paying for the park, I understand people's concerns, but let's face it. People go to parks with their kids to have fun. You're going to pay, you're going to maybe start charging everybody to go to Greenview Park or play on the you know so, but you know I used to take my kids to the Montville playground because it was such an awesome playground it was the wood structure right. we had so much fun nobody ever asked me if I was from out of town what am I doing there with my two kids watching them play in, in order and have to fun do that we would have to have somebody monitor, monitor it right. okay which is so in the anyway I just wanted to bring Thank up you. the point about the pavement and, okay. Thank you so but much. I don't know if anybody complained about that when that was being paved and that just sits there so Okay, thank you for your time. Thank, thank you. you. Do I have somebody else in the back? Yes. Janice Mean Jury, 17 Foothills Drive. Um, I could be wrong about this. I'm trying to find my map of that park, but I know the park goes in and out of a flood zone, so I'm not sure if the parking is in a flood zone sure. or not, to be honest with you. Um, I, I do have the um, GIF here, and I have um, the administration of the park. And there are there is a paragraph of the park's unsupervised if the park's supervised. If the park is unsupervised, the town must alert the police to the ordinance and require they enforce it. To enable the police to enforce an unsupervised park, a tag system should be used indicating who has signed a waiver and a commitment to abide by the rules. This is in an unsupervised park. That's the requirement that our GIF is showing. So uh, can I ask a question? So somebody has to stand there and get the signatures that you understand what the rules are? It's well, saying that the governing body yep. has to adopt a resolution ordinance whether or not it's supervised so you got to decide yes or no and then if it's unsupervised you have to alert the police to the ordinance and require that they enforce it that's the unsupervised park enforce what to enable the police to enforce an unsupervised park a tag system should be used indicating who has a signed waiver and a commitment to abide by the rules so they do that in that's in the unsupervised park so in West Milford at the BMX park right that's what they do so there's a big kiosk in the front and you actually, they have pens and paper, and you sign a waiver, and you put in there, and then the next time you actually get a, a tag or like what <laughs> you're talking about. So this way they have a waiver on file that basically says, at your own risk. And there is all the rules that are posted right there, and nobody is monitoring. You just go out there, and then you, you know, use your phone. That's, that's, like that's that. the I'm just trying to phantom this, so what if I don't fill out this paperwork and I decide to go skating? It's a non-monitored park. So the rules are That's there, and, and we've provided everything. Not like to, right. Or they have. They yeah. decided not to follow the rules. Right no, it's a non. It's an. It's a, a non-monitored non park. Yeah. They've done everything within. I guess yes, their insurance. We get you on used in park. You get kicked out, just like we do the dog park. Here. Right. Okay. So I guess if the police yeah. show up and you have a sign on that, we're correct. Their dog. Okay, gotta go. Right. Find someone. We right. remove them. They, they also say for supervised and unsupervised, there should be an accident incident procedure in place, and the attendant should have multiple means to contact the police or emergency units. So there needs to be a cell phone, two-way radio, oh, emergency okay. landline installed there is the suggestion. They also say maintenance procedures must be provided, and members must set up a specific inspection program. So these are all ongoing costs that, that are going to be incurred. Um, and also what I noticed was um, that the GIF currently excludes skateboard facilities. So it's not like a regular park that it's automatically covered. It has, there's like pages of things right. we gotta go through to get it covered. And then there is absolutely no excess liability. We cannot get it through our GIF. 
So you have the coverage that you have, but the excess liability, they will not cover escape port, period, under the GIF that we have. So that cannot be purchased. I mean, maybe you can get it at Lloyd's or something like that for an excess cost, but the regular parks are covered under the umbrella. This would not be covered under any circumstance. How much is our liability in terms of the Five. Um. Five million. So, five. Yeah, there's uh, different layers: self-insured, and then there's the GIF, and then there's the mail. And then they also say if they do approve it and put it in, uh, there may be additional fees, and there may be a deductible um, that we would have to, you know, pick up the first whatever they decide, hundred thousand, two hundred thousand. So, so there have are to ask the insurance company first before we build this park. Well, that's yeah. part of our questions, yeah. Right, okay. Just yeah, that's why these are and things we should be going through. That's why they provide us with that. Right. I right. just want to make sure we're all on the same page. That's yeah, those are pre-construction inspection. Sure. No, right. I, I realize that, but... But, in, but there's a lot of steps. Right, and the concept of this skate park, we're taking all this into consideration. Right, we have to figure out what is this thing going to look mm -hmm. like, how big is it going to be? Well, you're going to need a lot of these questions answered about? before you can even yeah. decide if you're going to build it, because all this is going to be part of that cost. So, uh, if, if that's the case, then I actually think that, and I think we talked about this a little bit earlier, we might have to have that ad hoc committee next Continue, week. right. Yeah, yeah they're also saying the facility think? must receive Oh, yeah, we got to change the scope because the scope doesn't fit it any longer. Right. It has to be a different ad hoc committee. Right. Yeah. Yeah, so pre-construction, they would have to have a, an, an inspection in writing by the local GIF safety director, too. So, so there's a lot of pieces of this. That you really all have that copy of that. I believe it's been shared with you. You all have this. There's a lot of ordinance, a lot of the formalities no, I know. that we I have to do. I just want to make sure that we're all yeah. right. I, I believe um, Mr. Holberg checked this all out before we even got this far. And we, you know. And, and we have been doing, you know, part of the requirements of who you hire is they have to be, you know, the engineer has to be certified. The right. designer has to be. And that's why we chose who we did. Yeah. Right, I, I get that. I, I was just really surprised that we couldn't even get the same amount of liability coverage as we have in the other parks. It's, it's not even available through our program. So that's something to consider. If, if we feel like we need this liability coverage at the other parks, why wouldn't we need it at this park? And why wouldn't they sell it at this park? I'm thinking because they think it's a high liability exposure. I don't know. Um, I also had one other question. Um, I, I've been going through the minutes of the um, of the meetings of past skate meetings, and it looks like when we were accepting um, proposals for the people who were designing the parks, we were looking for um, something in writing of parks that they had done in flood zones. Did mm -hmm. we ever get that? Does anyone know where that is? Because I haven't been able to. I don't know if we have yeah, that. It's part of their proposal. Okay, so is there some place I could get a copy of it if I come down? Um, yes. Okay. I don't have a copy on my desk, I, but I can pull it out of the bid final. Okay. Can I just stop or uh, give a couple of days? Give me a call ahead of time or an email <laughs> okay. about when you're going to be here. Okay. That'd be awesome. I'm just, I'm just going to say I can't seem to find any flood parks in the Northeast in a flood zone. So I'm trying to compare apples to apples. And um, I do see where Sayerville in New Jersey had a problem. They're not in a flood zone, but they had a problem with... Uh, water rising and messing up their bowl and there was a, a huge bill for that um, but i can't find any you know skate parks in the northeast um in a flood zone so i'm just curious if there were any all right so you can call the office uh, tomorrow awesome okay. thank you very much thank you anyone else we're almost uh, done with our 30 minutes did you have something in the back there no oh, i thought i saw her hand up there. all right we're good we're good all right at this time we've reached 30 minutes of public comment as previously noted an additional period for public comment will be reserved for later in the evening um next on the agenda is public hearing on ordinance number 2017-19 oh miss marsh I guess it's 19. No, 19. <laughs> Ordinance number 2017-19 is, is, amends Chapter 83 of the Revised General Ordinances of the Township of Aquanic entitled Fire Protection. All right, on this ordinance, are there comments from council? No. no. Well, they were answered last time. Yeah. Yeah. Everybody got it? We straight forward. All right, if there's no uh, comments, then is there a motion to open up the public hearing on this? I'll make that motion. I'll that, second it. All right, all in favor? Aye. 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 All right, if anyone in the audience has questions or comments on this ordinance, uh, please come to the microphone and identify yourself for the record. Anyone? 
All right. Is there a motion to close the public hearing? I'll make that motion. I'll second it. All in favor? Aye. 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 All right. And I'm going to ask for a motion to adopt I'll this make ordinance. To, to, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Okay. I'll make a motion to adopt this ordinance. Okay. This ordinance, 2017-19. Can I have a second? I'll second that. Roll, roll call, please. Mr. Hurd? Yes. Mr. Cole? Yes. Mr. Phelan? Yes. Ms. Winterfield? Yes. Mayor Florence Lynch? Yes. Um, we don't have any ordinances for introduction tonight, so we're going to move right on to the next agenda item, which is our resolutions for approval. Um, and we have five of them. Ms. Marsh, could you read those? Beginning with resolution R-2017-210, confirming the designated membership in the Taquanic Township Fire Department. That is for junior firefighter Nolan Baum. 2017-211, authorizing New Jersey DEP treatment works and temporary dewatering permit applications and statement of consent for the Route 23 northbound and southbound sanitary sewer extension. 2017-212, canceling water utility balances. 2017-213, canceling current fund balances. And 2017-214, approving payment of the itemized claims as set forth on the December 8, 2017 bill list. All right, thank you. Are there um, any comments from council? No. On any of these? No? No. Is there a motion to adopt these resolutions, please? I'll, I'll make a motion to adopt the resolution 2017-210 through 214. I'll second it. Okay. Roll call, please. Mr. Hurd? Yes. Mr. Cole? Yes. Mr. Phelan? Yes. Ms. Winterfield? Yes. Mayor Florence Lynch? Yes. All right. Next on the agenda, we have an item to discuss. Um, which records. is the records. We have this records. discussion every couple of years. Uh, chapter 185, records. <laughs> and service rate, huh? Yeah, this, uh, we haven't had this discussion. It's been a while. Now. It's been a while. Didn't we have this a couple of years ago? Seven years ago. Was it well, seven years ago? It's all blurring the, together. We've talked about the... Yeah. You know, who Inter makes up the list. Right, right, right. right. <laughs> but this talk is about, about the money. Okay. Um, so the police department has recommended that we revise our fee schedule. Um, and honestly, we haven't in 17 years. So it's oh, wow. pretty past due. So if my car breaks um, down, it should be in town, right? Because well, less expensive. this is not just the breaking down. This is for yeah, I know. Um, everything. This, and this is not money that we charge. This okay. is, if the police department requests a record uh, due to uh, a disabled vehicle that's in a you know, bad location yeah, dangerous or area. a motor vehicle accident, mm -hmm. that police have to call you know, for service to have cars removed. Um, the record service is only allowed to charge in those circumstances, you know, That's up to what right. we permit by ordinance. And our rates, when you look at the, uh, provided some comparable rates to other communities in the area, and we are low. Um, you also have the state police tow list. The, their rates are very high, but they're dealing with uh, interstates and parkway and turnpike, mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. um, they're probably not comparable. Um, so the police department is recommending that we increase. Um, yeah, what is the changes from and to? I see the other towns. Yeah, what are they? We see those it says comparisons. Current. And yeah. then what they're proposing. Right, uh, I got the other towns, and then or well, So is the, the proposed, right, you have the current ordinance. Yep. Um, Which is right here. Yep. So yep. basic automobile towing, uh, base charge of 50 plus $1.75 per mile. Mm -hmm. And um, so now we're going to uh, 110, 110, and it includes in town miles. So we tow you to our yard. And you don't yes. get charged mileage? Um, well, it depends on the situation. If um, it's a motor vehicle accident, the car owner can have it towed anywhere they want. Mm -hmm. But if they're going other than that, out of, you know, other than that tower's yard, they're going to be charged mileage. mileage right. but For an impound, right. they're going to Our a yard in town. Right. So if somebody gets pulled over and they don't have 
whatever a license registration. So basically, in town before it was 50, and now it's going to 110. So it's 50 plus mileage now. Right. It's I deal with this on a daily basis. The, the these rates are reasonable. The, the rates that we have hmm. currently, right. I haven't seen probably in 12 years. It's very old. Yeah. The rates that we're proposing are what is being yeah. what is being charged everywhere. And they're pretty much reimbursable. That's a good rate. Well, the insurance department pays. You know, if you have insurance and you have a motor vehicle these accident, these rates are good. Yeah. All right. Maybe from what I'm seeing with the other towns, it does make sense. It looks like it's in line with everybody else. Um, yeah, I'm fine with it. Is Did anybody have any questions on any of the other ones, or is everybody okay with no. them? No. Like I said, we're not making any. This is just discussion items for It's tonight. just to bring it up to date. How many how many towers do we have in town, Dave? On uh, the, we're, we're down to two. On the rotation. Yeah, we used to have, what, three or four? We used to have four. Okay. I know we're the one. Who's the other one? Uh, Roach. Roach. Isn't he the one that moved out of town, or is mm -hmm. he still in town? Well, you're allowed to be out of town. Oh, okay, so he's still uh, in town. You have to have a yard right. in right. town. Okay. Um, so, and the, of the four that we had three years ago, one retired, no longer tows. Mm -hmm. The other one just sold his. Just so those four, two, Roach, and... We're down to Roach and Serrero. All right. Okay. Have there been any issues? Actually, so they're getting fair amount part, of part of the reason that we're looking to address this is because one of them had said that they can't do it for those. No, yeah, it's too low. It's too low. This, this information, this current information that we're proposing, was definitely written by a teller, not by the police department. <laughs> <laughs> it was written in conjunction. Conjunction. They worked on it together. Right. They didn't mm -hmm. get as much as they wanted. Right. Yeah. Um, it, we don't have enough time to introduce and adopt right. uh, this year, so this will be on for introduction in January. Okay. Okay. You don't want to introduce it on the 26th? We can't. No. We can't carry over here. Oh, okay. Yeah. I didn't know that. Okay. All right. So everybody's okay with that one? Is yep. That discussion mm -hmm. in? Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Next on the agenda is reports and notices. We had three of them. Do we have any comments? on any of the reports. One was the municipal grant allocation. Nope, nope. Human nope. services nope, and public nope, pump nope. and links master nope. plan. All right, everybody nope, saw nope, that. Nope. Okay. All right, going right to the manager's report. Okay, uh, on the back of my report is a, <laughs> a listing of all the attendees that went to the FEMA open houses. Quant uh, Township had an excellent turnout at the open house meetings over over the two meetings that were held to serve all Morris County. Um, wow. Over 50% of the attendees were from Quant Township, uh, so we must have done a fairly decent got job the word getting out. that word out. Mm -hmm. Uh, I'm pleased to announce that we've hired Jen McCullough to fill the position of municipal flood advocate. She is a certified flood plain manager and has headed the county's flood mitigation program for the past several years. She'll start just after the first of the year. Um, wonderful. Happy to hear she that. She has been uh, great help to us in the past. I'm sure she'll do a wonderful job keeping our CRS. Where will well, she be? How, will she be in the other building or in, here? In or? Her office will actually be at the Henning House, but I imagine she'll spend a lot of time. In the beginning, general. especially. Yeah. Over at, D okay. at yeah. DPW. Okay. Annex, okay. Um, I've handed out a proposed uh, budget calendar. Mm -hmm. Please take a look at the dates and let me know if there's any conflicts. We need to work. Around. Is there an extra copy of this? Because we're short a copy of this. Oh. Yeah, we're sharing. There's one here. Oh, all right. Okay. Thank you. And that's my report. And just again to commend on the that we got 52 percent of the people out. Yeah. Or that were there. So I mean, Freeman knows are in for a fight. Yeah, but there. remember, yeah. we only found out about the dates with like, like days two before. days to go. Yeah. So I have to commend really everyone for getting the, the word out. We yeah. used every single media yeah, outlet. Could, so. My understanding is that by the end of the second meeting, they were FEMA was actually telling residents, don't worry, Paquan is going to appeal. <laughs> we got the point. <laughs> have we have the contractor, have they right. mobilized at all? They're not going to start working until January, you know, the consultants that we hired? No, they're working. They're working. They're working? Okay. Um, I got a uh, an email update today. It's a lot of technical stuff, so I didn't mm -hmm. bother passing okay. along. But yeah, there's 
progress. Are they going to go out in the field too and measure and do any of that stuff um, or survey? No, or most of it is actually you know digital, having to deal with the data the FEMA used mm -hmm. and doing you know calculations based on it. But what about some of those things where you know where they hit the trees and they're not proper measurements and things like that? Um, it, it will depend on what they the come data from FEMA said. Okay. If we have to take a look at that or okay. Great, thank you. Uh, Ryan, we'll start with you and go right down the line. Sure, I'll anything? be quick. The uh, only thing I have to report really, my senior uh, advisory committee was canceled. Open space I missed because of our meeting yesterday. And Mac is tomorrow at 4.30 over at the high school. You'll be able to make that, right? Yeah. Good. That's all I have. Hey, Rich. Uh, shade tree met, I think, two, two Mondays ago. I can't keep track. <laughs> <laughs> and we talked about trees, obviously. Um, company one and company two had their Santa Clauses run over the weekend. Um, Melissa, you made a comment, which we straightened you out about. Yeah, oh, right. right? Yeah. Somebody <laughs> told me that was company I, one Santa in a company two truck. And yeah. I said, I don't know. <laughs> I don't think so. Don't mix and match. Right. Um, <laughs> Yes, uh, but uh, interesting because I got a uh, email from the soon-to-be chief fell at Company One. Mm -hmm. They had 500 kids, children, yeah. uh, you know, run up to the fire truck and so forth, etc. Um, it's amazing. Do they yeah. take it away? Do they take it over and drive it away? Mm -hmm. with <laughs> no, but there was a lot of plastic mugs and yeah. out, I understand. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, and also the chiefs from Fire Company One, Fire Company Two, and the First Aid Squad met with what is it? Northeast mm -hmm. uh, communication to talk about the frequency problems they're having with fire ban. So that's it. Mm -hmm. Okay, great. Thanks. Kathy? I have a bunch of things. The um, I'm just wondering where we are at with the, the street light LED ordinance, Bob. Or did we get? Did you guys put your heads together? I sent you. No progress. Sorry, I we'll just get haven't there. had you. But I sent you. <laughs> you, you did. I we have it. Okay, because yeah. there's some good stuff. There is good stuff in there. We we need to do that. That'll have to be next year too. <laughs> next year's not far. <laughs> <laughs> right around the January, February, right? That's right. right. <laughs> okay, because that that's important. Because yeah. I think once yeah. we do it, we can get other people. Yeah. It'll be a long process. But you got to start it. Mm -hmm. we got, we've got to start it. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. I sent you all the paperwork to do it. Okay. All right. Um, Environmental Commission is not meeting tomorrow. We met last week because there was an ANJAC webinar mm -hmm. that we took part in. And it was very technical, but it was all about septic system management. Right. And there were three really important points that I took from it. Uh, one of those is with the wastewater management program. They highly suggest that we adopt an ordinance that requires um, that they be inspected every three years, I know, every three years, and pumped at least every five years by a licensed service provider. Now, the committee spoke about that they worked with, you know, Pete Coriel, and he wasn't in favor in this. I lived in West Milford with a septic system. I am in favor of this. I don't know what what you think, David, or anything, but I think that um, the commission only, you know, they went through the webinar, they will come up with their recommendation, but they were leaning towards that we really should be, take, council should take a look at this. We need more information. Yeah. Well, there's a lot of information out there, but that, that was one point. Number two, the second point was that I guess this is, I don't know if this is new or it's just being enforced now. They're saying municipalities are supposed to educate the homeowners who have septic systems and we're required every three years to do a mass mailing. I don't know if we've ever done a mass mailing to people with septics. I think we have. We it, have. And it, we have, and they said what's well, easy to do if you don't want to come up with your own thing, there's a DEP homeowner's guide on septic systems that you can right. just mail. Right. When's the last time we did it? Was it? I don't remember, but I remember doing it. Um, You've been around a long time. <laughs> <laughs> Pick this up Thanks. and we can follow up on. Just well, that's just something you could put in that book. Yeah, okay. You know, that book that you're going to put the manager. Book of tasks. Yeah, you know that book? So that was one point. And then the third point was one that I am not a technical person, but I wanted to, it was a, they kept rehashing this point. There's this WQMP, Water Quality Management Planning, mm -hmm. and they kept saying in the webinar about the municipality, but when I went online and looked, it says the county is responsible for this. 
with reporting and doing analysis on the nitrates, the nitrate analysis Correct. that's very harmful to the water mm -hmm. and that we should be really working on reducing that. TBS, and that's TBSA has to be real careful with it. Yeah. So I don't know. They said that's something we should be looking at and that's just something I wanted to bring up. It was those three points that I really took from the webinar that I thought were really important and the Environmental Commission, I'm sure, will Great. come do a report when they do their annual report. But those were the three highlights of that. Okay. The Historic Commission met the same night and uh, the only thing they have is they have a um, Dave Wisniewski's son, Matthew, is going to be an Eagle Scout. His project he has chosen is uh, Ballard's at the train station that used to be there, which I didn't realize. They showed me an old photograph. There were these white Ballard's and he's going to try to recreate this to the same look with new stuff. What were they used for to keep cars from banging into it? I guess so. It, you know, so. It doesn't make sense. Horse you train a horse up, <laughs> yeah. I have or trains that jump to tracks. Yeah. And he's going to try to do. Um, well, they, they talked about the plants and stuff that were from that time period and all that. I said, well, why don't we just get something that's like maintenance free? The plants from? Plants around. Yeah, there's pictures where there were certain plants around. We've got a lot of plants around there. Yeah. Who's yeah. Gonna take so that's that? going to be a project. He has to finish before September or something. So just look for more to come on that. I'm sure he'll do a great job. And then... Uh, the PSA, the Pequannock Skate uh, Association, uh, I joined them as well as the sheriff at Greenview Park for uh, litter cleanup. Mm -hmm. It was very interesting. Um, there, there's, there should be no litter there. There was a lot more litter than I ever imagined. Uh, I don't know how many pounds he reported, but I'd guess 30, 30 pounds. pounds we took out 30 pounds of litter. litter. But that's a carry-in, carry-out, isn't it? Well, I guess it's carry-in. <laughs> um, but what... Well, I know that um, when we had uh, the presentation from you know, from Pete, that he was committed to putting some plastic bags for certain things. And I know it's probably not the season. He was going to put some strategic ones, you know, if there's ice cream truck comes and they don't can't put their ice cream things. But I have to say, half of what I picked up were beer cans. So uh, I'm sure it's not our residents in there. I'm sure it's, <laughs> I'm sure it's out of towners. But there were a lot of beer cans in Greenview Park, and I talked to the sheriff about that. And, you know, so, I mean, in our nice little Pequannock, these things don't happen, so I know it was from the outside. <laughs> but you have to face reality that that's what it was. So, and, and there was something very interesting that I was trying to read online. There were a lot of, um, all over the place, baby wipes. And I said to the sheriff, what are these baby wipes? This is driving me crazy. And we're wondering if it's something where they clean off needles or something. I don't know. But this is in our nice little Greenview Park. They were all over the place. with baby wipes? I don't know. I was trying to figure out why are baby wipes scattered all through Greenview Park? They look like baby wipes. I don't know. He didn't know. I didn't know. So I went online. I was trying to Google it and find out. But I'm really concerned about, you know, I was really concerned about it. I would think that if they're cleaning off needles, you would find needles. Right. Well, I didn't find needles. I'm sure they're not throwing the baby wipe and saying, oh, let me put this yeah. needle in my pocket. <laughs> well, they were, I don't think it was a mom with a baby That's who a went throughout Greenview Park and threw them all over the place. I, I, don't, I don't know. I, I don't know. So that was just... I'll have to see if that's an isolated day or whether... You know, I don't know. If you go back six... If you go back... I'll tell you, the place is squeaky clean now. Yeah, good. If you go back in six months from now and you find that, you know... Then it's a concern. Then it's a concern. No, and that's my report. Well, thank you. Uh, Fair housing, as Rocco uh, mentioned, met on uh, November 29th with Greener by Design. That was uh, Nicholas's first meeting with us. Mm -hmm. uh, Parks and Rec met on 12-4. I missed that meeting because I had the high school football dinner that night. Uh, first Aid Squad met last night. Uh, for November, they had 54 calls. And for um, November 1st, 2016 to October 31st, 2017, they had 709 calls. Wow. And that's all I have. Hey, Dave, didn't uh, one of the members or two of the members? Uh, yes, two, two of the members got life-saving awards for this past Saturday. There was a, a fall at uh, CVS parking lot, and the person went into cardiac arrest, and they were able to bring him back and deliver him to the hospital mm -hmm. with a regular heartbeat. He actually fell out of a truck. Yeah. But didn't they also report last night at their uh, Christmas party, didn't they have um, nine overdoses? Yeah, they, they list yeah, in, uh, in our town nine they, overdoses. They list the the number fall victims were was a, was 64. Then the next were breathing problems with 53, mm -hmm. and there were uh, nine uh, overdoses in in Pequannock. In Pequannock. Yeah. All right, Dave. Is that it? 
nine overdoses that I think that they probably brought the person back to life. They used uh, Narcan. Yeah, Narcan. but that's only worse because if you don't get them into you know rehab for 30, just 60 days, they'll just do it again. They'll just do it again. That, that law needs to change. Yeah. 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 You, could, you could be saved with Narcan and but you have walk to have out of the hospital the next day and... Not we're together. Not go right back to it. Right. Yeah, and it's more lethal the next time, huh. you know, when you hit yourself up like that. That's all I have. Thank all you. right, thank you. Um, Carol, I just wanted to bring up while I was thinking about it, did, I'm assuming that all our boards and committees and commissions and volunteers got the... They did. Um, all right, I wasn't sure. Everybody got that email that there will the holiday luncheon has come back to town hall for all right. our committees. But it's not town hall. hall. It's in well, the senior center. It's in the senior center, but the township is doing it. And the, they had, we had stopped it for a couple of years. And that is back. That's Wednesday, December 20th, starting at noon. Um, everyone's invited to the senior house. Oh, well, that's when we have our early meeting, too, right? Oh, yeah. uh, is that what we just set up no, for? No, that's no, the 26th. Oh, the 26th. Yeah. No, no. When we have our next workshop meeting is the 20th. Okay, then we just but play that, that night. At 6 o'clock. 6 yeah, o'clock. Yeah. This uh, is 12 o'clock in the afternoon. Right. Yeah, I know, but you might as well just come hang out. We'll yeah, play. we should do it at 2. <laughs> go to lunch. i got to go to work. That's right. Forget work. Yeah, Forget work. All right, next, everyone got their... If you didn't get it yet, the fire department's having their annual installation dinner, January 13th. Um, and then we talked about um, there's going to be an Eagle Scout Court of Honor for our newest Eagle Scouts on December 30th. Um, I don't know if uh, anyone else is going to be able to join uh, me, but that will be for two scouts, Benjamin Flito and John White. December 30th is a Saturday, right? I think yes, so. I believe so. I think it is. Yeah. So, um, if you guys can make that. And what else? We have minutes tonight. And then I just wanted to make a comment, too, about our... Um, our, our fire department, both Company 1 and Company 2, have been doing a great job um, going around making joy come to everyone in town. I mean, the, the amount of kids that love what they're doing, and it's just it's great to see the community come together. There's been hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of, of kids, so I really thank them for uh, what they're doing in our community. It's a lot of work, I mean. It is a lot of work. Uh, they were out from 10 o'clock in the morning until yeah. 5.30 on, uh, I guess it was Sunday. Yeah, I worked with one of the... I think they're out during the week, too. Yeah, yeah I work, so out, I work with one of, the, one of the agents yeah. uh, works at a company, too, and he like signed up for like seven nights or something like it's yeah, they, a lot of time right they, they do there's a little bit different yeah company one does company one does theirs all in one day yeah company two splits their days up mm -hmm. what mm -hmm. time is the uh, eagle scout it is looking right at it i'm sure where is it hmm? I'm sure it's at the First Reform Church. It's probably at the First Reform Church. I don't see a time on here. Then. Probably one Am I missing it? One o'clock, somewhere around. Uh, oh, here it is. Saturday, December 30th, First Reform Church, 1 p.m. At the bottom. All right. And that's really all I have. Uh, next on the agenda is public comment. Um, if anyone would like to address the council. Marco. We missed you. Hmm? Yeah. Rocco Solution 153 Jacksonville World. I have um, um, the question that I have is we have a, um, a situation next to Frank Sanitation. I'm sorry, Frank Service Center. Every time you pass by over there, I think the guy's going to start selling papers pretty soon. Huh. Is anybody looking and see what a disaster and high store that is? You mean the place at the end of Alexander and Turnpike right there? Yeah. Right on the Turnpike, the lot, the empty lot that uh, Has that there been is over there. developments there, Dave? I know that so empty. we've been, my understanding is we've been. This is about four or five years, I think. Right. We've, been, hmm. we've been going through this for quite some time. Now you put papers over there. I guess it's going to start selling stuff out of it. And it wouldn't be so bad if he kept the stuff in the back, but everything is out in the front. It's such an eyesore. The, the town continues to write summonses, and he continues to go to court. Um, as Does he pay? As a couple months ago. Uh, stop, paying, start, start getting some summons that he's going to put up money out of his pocket. Then I'm sure he's going to change his mind. If there's anything else we can do, I would love to do it. <laughs> yep. 
really. Yeah. I mean, I had people from outside that they want to buy in Pequannock. I said to me, oh, I'm changing my mind. I said, what's the matter? Said, have you seen them in the North Pump the Turbine? I said, what? I'll play stupid like I don't know. I can see every time I pass them by. We're disgusted, too. It's, it's a huge eyesore, and I just, uh, you know. Well, thank you. We've discussed it yeah. a, yeah. a million times. times. There's yeah. not much that we The guy's parking garbage the truck over there, too. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We're doing all the enforcement right. we can. Well, everything we physically can do. Uh, uh, look into it. Maybe it might be a little something they overlooked. No, we looked at that. Uh, but we'll and yeah, I have a, another question concerning the parks. If we have so much uh, going on in the parks over there, don't we have uh, park rangers that they uh, usually make their rounds? We have two part-time park rangers. I, I actually two see part -time. the park ranger almost mm -hmm. on a daily basis going down to the uh, garden by my house. I know they're around. I'm sure, I'm sure the park ranger as, long, as well as the police drive. No, I mean, for people that, to have that kind of uh, things going on in the uh, PV park over there, it's got to be a little more surveillance than that. Maybe we could send a couple cop cars just to ride through there. To They'd have to sit there all I'm night. Sure they do. No, 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 I'm not talking about all night. Though. There's sometimes a presence of a, a policeman or something. And we would, people would think twice. If they see that uh, nobody's going around there, they just like to have liberty to do what they want. A little more, you know, sometime uh, put a picture of a cop over there, something. <laughs> you know, like they used to do over. You got to do something to, to, to discriminate, you know. Well, we yeah. found some yeah. other yeah. things, yeah. too. Like that. Sometimes they do that. They'll park, park a car on the side of the street. Yeah, you got to do a little more than that, because when you start eating about people Rocco, when you... you were a teenager, right, one time? You were a teenager one time? <laughs> <laughs> no, it was right. When I... When, when the cop... When I, I got to tell you, when I grew up... Never a teenager. When I grew up, my mother never hit me. All she had to do just look at me. I knew it was coming. All right, Rocco, thank you right. for your thoughts. Thank you. Um, anyone else? Come on up, Jordan. Jordan Galliano, 10 Pick Ave. Um, just to comment again what Kathy was saying about the um, park cleanup. Um, it is upsetting to see litter and debris in, in the parks. Um, for me, as an Eagle Scout, I've learned the, the uh, manner of uh, carry in, carry out. And for me, it's just common sense. If you go to bring anything to eat or drink, you it's going to end up being later on your way out. And um, I don't know, I just think it's upsetting that a lot of people don't take that same ideology about carry in, carry out. Um, but I think that there may have to be a little bit more education with it. I'd, I'd like yeah. to speak with Tom Andrea about it and implementing it because his son's an Eagle Scout. Or, um, no, he's in Boy Scouts. I'm not sure if he's an Eagle Scout yet. Um, but um, I would want to work with him and kind of figure out what to do with Parks and Rec and kind of make that more more knowledgeable about the town because it's just common sense. And it's about pride in my opinion. Yeah, right. it, absolutely. Yeah, I'm, right. I'm proud I'm to be in this town. town. I'm proud of living in this town. Yeah. I'm not going to throw stuff all over the place. Absolutely. And exactly. Exactly, and I think it was that's upsetting. Part of, um, it, it's very interesting to take part in some of these litter cleanups because yes. it does mm -hmm. kind of tell you who's visiting yeah, your parks right. and what they're doing Absolutely. in your parks. Okay. It's a real eye opener to see firsthand. Do you think mm -hmm. that stuff blew over from Lincoln Park? No. <laughs> Not at all. Yeah. And then another thing that I saw too was um, there was glass, like broken glass, literally on the edge of the sidewalk or like on the grass by the sidewalk. Which is I had to pick it up multiple times. Yeah, very dangerous. Well, if you have little kids running a around. Fluorescent light bulb or something was all in the oh, parking lot. Oh, yeah, that was in the parking lot back by the um, tennis yeah. courts. But like even on the path from um, the playground uh, going by the hill and then towards the second part, there were like broken glass bottles there and I had to pick them up. I wasn't going to leave them there. And right. like if a little kid is running around, trips and falls and gets a piece of glass in their arm or something. So the like question it. is, how does a fluorescent bulb get into the park? Mm -hmm. Yeah, you wonder. I, I don't know. I mean, Can't recycle. it's very yeah. interesting. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. Somebody I don't know. without pride buy yeah. through it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, thank you for no your problem. thoughts. Anyone else? Yes, Jackie. I fell asleep. Um, okay, Jackie Stavala again. So, my kids were skaters. I'm going back to the skate park and just listening to everything that was going on. I know Jordan when he was growing up. I know a lot of these kids when they were growing up, they're good kids. Support, worked for, 
Parks and Rec many, many years. So one of the things was, you mentioned Jen McCullough was hired. Is that the FEMA, is she going to be the FEMA advocate? To no. f that's what you're saying? Was she? The, is that the person we're hiring for the township? Flood. Well, she's going for to be flood? Our, our mouthpiece to go against FEMA with what's been... Well, that'll be one of her roles. roles. Okay. Uh, also Can I ask you how much we're given for that? We, we hired a separate firm to fight the new... To fight the maps. She's okay. not the she's Do we know, like, am I allowed to ask now or would I have to come and like, subpoena those records? $25,000. No. $25,000. $25, okay. So that's great. I'm sure she's very good at what she does. You gave No, 20? this isn't that's her. Not, that's, that's not, not this. Her. That's, that's something I was the, but for the FEMA you gave twenty five thousand, right. okay? So now we have how many families that are in the FEMA map inclusive now? Like new and were added? Yeah. Two hundred and forty four. Okay, so two hundred and forty four into that number. The chronic math, I'm not doing it, it's too late. Um, but we're willing but we're willing to give up to how much money for the skate park? For a handful of kids, they don't live there. Their, their homes aren't being affected. I know they can go for grants. I know they can raise their houses. They're going to have to be paying um, healthy insurance FEMA rates for these houses because now they're included in this FEMA map. And I just find it odd. I'm looking at each and every one of you. I'm friends with a lot of you. I've, I've talked with a lot of you. That you're going to spend $25,000 on plans for a skate park, but you're only spending $25,000. Hopefully, I'm going to ask you if you're going to spend more for people to defend people against whatever. It's not, it's not a homes. defense. It's not a defense. It's not where you go to court and say it's not fair. It's a... It's whatever the terminology yeah, is. But it's not a defense. Right. It's a calculation. And right. They, that's what we... you know. We, we, we asked them what their fee was. And that's, that's what they okay. We can't hire anymore. If we can't put a million dollars right. towards it and we don't get any more... And it's, than it's, it's a set time and nothing perfect than that, that I've been enlightened. So you've answered that question. I appreciate yeah, it's that. It's not like we're going to go to court and say it's not fair. Just, and I'm just putting little snippets in people's minds. My other thing, I'm just going to go back to what I said before. I looked on the, the website for Bar Harbor and it's up to date and I called people from there. The cost of their design was $6,500 by Pilar for, now I was corrected, a 4,000 square foot. We're looking at 8,000. How come it was... Four times two is eight thousand, right? And they spend sixty five hundred. Sixty five hundred doubled. Well, how come it's twenty five thousand for the skate? I for guarantee that? you, the cost of paving a mile right. road in. Bar no, this is just the design. Paid. Yeah, but that's it's not what like, we paid. That's what we allocated. The bill. Oh, okay. Paid up to that, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Prevailing wage. That's Shoot me in the back, whatever. I don't know. Yeah. Um, I don't know what we've paid okay. yet, but it's not twenty five. Now, as far as litter, litter came up. You guys did a great job. I take that garbage can. I go by North Boulevard School. Me and my neighbors, mm -hmm. we pick up a lot of garbage. Are there going to be garbage cans at the skate park, or is it carry in, carry out? Carry in, carry out. Okay. And that's why people have wipes, because they're carrying the garbage, and they've got to wipe their hands, and they throw the no, thing these, these, No, these wipes weren't dirty like that. Okay. Um, another question. I asked this at the skate park committee, and I never got an answer. How much money has been raised by this skate park committee in a matter of how many years? Are you talking about the skate park? Uh, the PSA whatever the, the terminology is. Right. How much money has actually been raised? Not I'm not talking about in kind. Okay. Not a lot. Probably not, not enough to yeah. talk about. Okay. Right. So, but what I did was when I called up in Bar Harbor, like I said, that, that, lot of land was given to them by the good people like yourselves in Bar Harbor. They gave them that little, little bit of land. I don't care if it's, I do care if it's in the flood zone, maybe we could find somewhere else. And then say, here guys, because they're not kids, they're 25 and 30 year olds. And a lot of them that I spoke to on the committee don't even live in town. They're pushing for this. You know what? On the backs of the good taxpayers, a lot of whom already are stressed out, we have a new $5 million water tower at the top of beautiful thing. People got gas, people got water up there. That's great. How much are our taxes going up for that? Like I say, it's a cup of, it's the cost of a cup of coffee. I'm drinking so much coffee. I don't even drink coffee. I'm drinking so much coffee, I could go to Tiffany's and have a full dinner for the cup of coffee for this, the cup of coffee for that. Oh, it's a, no, it's not a cup of coffee anymore. Um, the helmet enforcement are the cops. I, I wish the cops would sort have of stayed because I was going to ask them. Now you see kids without cop, without helmets, different on a bike. You're riding on the street. That's your thing. This is something over here. And I was told by one kid, what about helmets? He goes, I'm not going to wear a helmet. I asked him about the fences. I'll jump over a fence to get in. That bothered me. That bothered me. Um, for the kids not doing drugs, all these kids that you're saying overdose, I know a lot of them personally. Yeah, they're not okay? found. No, but yes, the ones I'm talking about were, and were my oh, kids' okay. friends, okay? Oh, okay? 
So just because you're skateboarding doesn't mean you're not going to be a drug addict. I'm sorry, you can advocate that, Kathy, but it's not. I, I keep asking, how much money was raised? You want to give them a piece of land? Give them a piece of land. Some skins got to come off their back to be why they have to be liable for this it's not a gift Jackie, in defense of them they and i understand where they're coming from they wanted to see some kind of plan that they could go to people and say this is what we're planning right. to do and, and hopefully they'll be able to raise money right. once they have well how many years have they been doing this kathy would know the most because right. she sits on the committee they've never but gotten this far they never got this far that's well true. she sat there that night yes she not did no she's committee. not on the committee but she sits with the committee at that table she was sitting with the committee so you know it's there's a lot of things that have to go here now the other thing on the GIF thing which you guys all have Jackie and if you don't you, you ask a lot of questions you don't let us answer no I know but, uh, but you know, I don't know how much time the coffees this is why I don't drink coffee guys could you imagine me on coffee <laughs> yeah, but, you're, but you're, you're throwing out questions and you're not letting us but answer Kathy I asked you these questions a lot and I answered on you phone, right on now phone you're not calls. letting counsel let, let, okay. let's go let, 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 like, let me get my questions I mean you're throwing things out we never mentioned a cup of coffee once no, no, no. But, um, but this is right. the proverbial cup of coffee that I have. Right, you yeah. Do question. you have a specific question? You asked the question. How much money has been raised in, in a certain amount of time by, I think the people, I don't know if it's taped or not, the people of this township should know not how long not. these kids have been working on this. And as I said, they're not kids. They're 20 yeah. to 30 year olds. Well, that's their nonprofit and they're doing a great right job. now. And we're not yeah. even to the price yet, but you wanted to know when they got started. No, they but started. we are into a price because when Pilar gave their three things, the top price was $500,000. Uh, well, I, I, I want to go back to a couple questions. Mm -hmm. You know, one of them, I mean, if you want answers or, or you all. Go ahead. As the so you wanted to know, well, no, I'm not the liaison. Well, I'm actually the liaison. Well, no, but you wanted to know when it started. It started October of 2015. That's when the Skate Advisory Committee was formed. Was so formed. two years and a month. Two years and two months. Yeah, that's when they started, and they had a certain scope, and their scope was to come up with a design so we could come up with a price to see if we wanted to move forward with this project. And wait, that's wait, about they, they wanted to move forward with the project. No, no, no. We, mm -hmm. if we wanted to budget for something like this, that they had a specific task, the advisory, to come up with a design. Because we're not skaters. And that's, right. We wouldn't even know what a good design was or a bad design. All we know is we've seen townships that have built them and they failed and they fall apart. Mm -hmm. And we knew that we weren't experts, so we said we better hire an advisory to do all the legwork for us. And they've done a fine job and they're almost done. And that's where we're at. And how much did they raise? Well, Steve, when did you become that the state a non advisory when did you is become not a non profit organization? No. Just last month. Okay, so well, no. Well, we, we cut ties with. Yeah, go ahead. Sorry, you are Steve. Sorry. Let, let, so if it was Let's last month, no one's going to make a donation. We were. We were. Right. A, uh, until you're a non profit organization. Exactly. Yeah. Well, we we're under uh, Solid Foundation as a fiscal sponsor, and last month we switched over to create our own non profit. They wanted to take and a percentage. You know, when we have a final design. We used to keep 100% of the uh, donations, uh -huh. 300 to the uh, fiscal spot. Right. So, uh, when we have that design, we'll have something to actually do some fun with. So right. anything to this point is really just kind of fun. Yeah, I mean, if someone's going to donate to a project, they don't even know it's going to happen. Pretty. Would you buy a house if you didn't have it? So that was the main reason I for forming the nonprofit. So now you can go out and start doing your fundraising. All right, thank you. Anything else? Um, there was one more thing. I can put the glasses back on. Um, oh, I'll, I'll go talk to Barn Spring and PBA because, you know, I did give to that too. But when they say they're going to donate, like, I know you say, we're going to donate. You're talking $500,000. How much do you, you collectively, think that these, this group should raise to support this endeavor? I think that's a discussion we're going to have to have. That right. once I think we, we get to, the number, right. we're going to have exactly. to say, let's this is what we think. And you'll listen to the people from the township, what we think. We're going to listen to everything. Well, people from me, the township, I'm, people from the committee. Let me ask you a question. <laughs> you sure you want to do that, Ryan? You know me? <laughs> so, are you for or against this? this um, I'm for it if it's funded by the people that want it. I horseback rode right here on Chimney Sweep Farms. I paid for it. I skied. Mommy drove me up to skiing. If I couldn't get a ride, we carpooled. 
you know, I know Sandy LaCourt stood up here. Her, she's got five, so oh, sorry, six boys. They all played ice hockey. I know they could have another house, probably in Hawaii, with the money they paid for their skate fees. They, they didn't, you know, nobody took it off of, out of, I didn't write a check for Sandy's kids to, to skate. And when I sat here at this committee, you came in late. It was like a Christmas list that an open check, almost like an open check, but that's the feeling I got. That's my personal opinion. That's the feeling I got from this group that it's an open checkbook paid for by Pequannock Township, paid for by the people of Pequannock Township. And I, have, I do have a problem with that. Now, if they, if you guys want to give them the, the land, give them the land and put it on them and say, you know, it's like giving your kid a car. Give them a kid a car. He paid for half of it. I matched him. And he paid for the insurance so, and the gas. You were for it. Let's let's not for no. not for me paying for it though. What the water is different stuff. What, what if me? they came up with X amount and we matched that? How much so, you talking, Ryan? I have no but idea. Again, that's and that's what I, we're I have no for. idea how much. And who knows? That but, might no, be but a I saw the, they I saw the plans up to eight, up to five hundred thousand dollars. You're not talking lighting, fencing. Oh, one more, one more thing. Little League. They're in their thirtieth year. Grew, grew up with the family that raised all that money, and they do a great job. They have their parade. They, they do, sure do. We have our banners. We have the bathrooms. They redid the field house. They have the. Now, are these kids when they do their parties? Are they going to be using? My kids had to pay for a little league, Ryan. I had to cut a check. Right. My husband was a coach for five years. And I'm the one. Six years. Five I years. Got paid, and I got. And let me again. tell you, they had to pay. There was a fee. It wasn't the for, also, for me. The town also redid all those fields. Great, but you know what? On the backs of somebody else who, who works very hard raising funds for that. Who's going to clean the bathrooms if the Little League players, I, I really would like to, I don't know if there's a Little League website or Facebook or whatever, but can you know when I leave here this week, I'll be calling a lot of Little League parents and saying, you know your dollars that go for Little League, it's going to be open now, open bathrooms? Are the bathrooms heated? If it's in the winter, they're going to be open? Are we going to have broken? But who's you, cleaning you, it? You, it's it's all questions. That you have to ask. So you, you don't think that you might be able to use a restaurant? You have to ask this before you took this endeavor on, Ryan. But understand, Washington Park is the township park. It's I know not it owned is. by Little League. No, I know it's not. Right. I know that. Can I did my homework. Rooms. Yes. Well, who's going to take care of them? And then when our Little take League people... Right take care of them right now. DPW takes care of them right now. Okay. And how often how are they open? How long are they open? Which means if we open them at night when these kids are going to be skating, who's going to be in who's charge of them? Who's going to skate at night? I mean, I don't know where that came up with. I mean, I, uh, that's something okay. that you started. Well, these are all things we're going to have to take into consideration. How many hours of operation? I'm putting. Uh, we're past the I'm putting the horse in front of the cart, not the I cart in front of the horse. And I do appreciate what you people do, but I'm, I'm picking your brains, and I'm but just you raised by Catholic nuns. You don't think they should be this. able to use a bathroom that a little, yeah. little leaguer should use? Yeah. All right, yeah. they should, but who's going to be? All right, I know. Oh, okay. Let's wrap this up. Let's not have the back and forth. Okay. We, I'm just we, curious. All good I'm questions. I'm just trying to ask questions, and and I want the town people to know what's going on and how much homework all of you have done before writing a check for this endeavor, we which I do thank you check. all yeah. for your that check yet. volunteering. Thank, thank you, Jackie. Thank all right, Lat. No, no, we, we it be better be quick because we got to go into closed session. Um, I just know I don't do Facebook. I hate Facebook. I hear a address. lot of things. Uh, Janice Galliano. Heck out. <laughs> <Yes. laughs> I hate Facebook personally. I know what's going on out there. I just wish comments are, it seems like comments are being made. There is no, um, a, no truth to some of them being put out there. And I just wish people would come to these meetings instead of putting it on social media and getting a whole misperception about everything that is discussed at these meetings and nowhere else because it's like telephone. You know, oh, it's going to cost 250000 Oh, no, it's going to cost 500000 Oh, no, it's going to cost 700000 That's why we can encourage so, all to come. Yes, so thank that's you. why I just feel like okay, this is the do. place to voice it, not on social media, people, please. Thank Let's, you. And if you do, get the facts straight. And don't forget it's thank square footage. Square right. footage, you know. <laughs> 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 all right, next on the agenda. All right, we're, we're, we're done with that. I guess I can move along. Okay. Uh, I'll make a motion to go into closed session. All right, second. Second. All right. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? <laughs> oh.